Here in this fifth Power Series lesson, we start to do something new with our multi-tool of mathematics. Again, we have this idea of a power series, an infinitely long uh, polynomial. We know that it's a multi-tool. And so we're trying to squeeze, get as much as we possibly can out of, of this tool. Uh, remember that for many of the famous mathematicians, uh, for for Newton, for Leibniz, for Euler, for those guys, like they use power series all day, every day. For them, they were using power series because they had no other tool. They hadn't invented the specialty tools that we have now, like a graphing calculator, or even more important, they didn't have things like just a, a Y equals sine X like we do, uh, certainly in the same manner. Uh, and so they were using power series as a way to represent and also a way to evaluate um, these these functions. So in this particular lesson, we're going to learn a technique for finding a power series representation of a given function. We'll start with the sine function, we'll work our way to e to the x, um, and then we'll look at how we could combine, say, um, e to the x with a polynomial. So x to the fourth times e to the x. How would we combine these things, like a couple of known series, and make yet another series. Again, always squeezing, getting more and more out of the very few power series formulas that we know, uh, but using not just algebra, not just calculus, but now um, the idea of an infinite number of derivatives as a mechanism for finding uh, for finding our power series. Uh, this particular lesson has a, has a name. Here we're talking about the idea of what's called a Maclaurin series. So power series, part two. Here we're going to, going to look at power series term by term using derivatives. That is, we're going to find our power series uh, term by term using derivatives. So previously, we found the derivative of power series. This next example is a little different. Here we use derivatives to find the coefficients. Example one, find a power series representation for f of x equal to sine x. So here we're going to assume that that there is a power series representation and given that assumption show that it is indeed the case. We'll also have to assume um, something about where that power series will converge. Um, later on, we will prove that this is a, a legitimate assumption, but so far we're just gonna um, kind of go with it and see how far our these simple assumptions can take us. So let's start here. Let's suppose, so let's suppose that uh, there is a power series representation, representation. That is, let's suppose that sine x um, is equal to some power series c, c naught plus uh, c1 x plus c2 x squared plus c3 x cubed plus dot, 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 dot. And so if this is going to be the case, this must be true for all x's. So this is true, or if true, then true for all x. And specifically, we say if it's true for all x's, it must be true at x equals 0. So if x equals 0, then the left side of this, the sine x here, will equal the sine of 0 or 0. And the right side, which is all of this garbage, will equal um, will equal C naught plus C1 times 0 plus C2 times 0 plus dot, 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 dot. Multiply by 0 a whole bunch of times, you're going to get 0. And so at the end of the day, we just simply have that C naught equals 0. That is to say, we found the first of our coefficients in our sine series, and it's 0. Well, that works so well with sine, we think, what other function might 
um, also be easy to evaluate at zero. And we think to ourselves, ah, maybe cosine. So what's the relationship between sine and cosine? They're derivatives. So next up, let's differentiate both sides. Differentiate, differentiate both sides. So if we differentiate the yellow side, we're going to get the derivative of sine is cosine of x. And the derivative of the blue stuff of the power series on the right is going to be derivative of c naught is 0. So we're just going to have c1 plus 2c2x plus 3c3x squared. And then it would be plus 4 c4 x cubed, et cetera, et cetera. So we differentiated. And when we differentiated our left side, derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of the power series on the right is this new power series. Once again, we can evaluate at x equals 0. So if x equals 0, that left side is going to be cosine of 0, which is 1. And the right side is going to be uh, c1 plus 0 plus 0 plus da 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 da. Um, so here's that uh, c1 on the right side. Here's the 1 on the left. And so we have found our second uh, coefficient. So, so far we found the coefficient c0 equals 0. Now we found the coefficient c1 equals 1. Okay. We found two coefficients out of the infinite number of coefficients. Um, I guess we're sort of better off than we were before. Let's just keep going and see what happens. Um, using that same, um, that same uh, technique. So we're going to play the same game as before. So we're going to differentiate both sides. Oops. Sorry, I'm using a new stylus today. So uh, we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. And so we see that the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. Oh, that's an ugly. Yes, sir. Negative sine x. And the derivative of the right side. So this is our derivative is negative sine. On the right side, we will have. Uh, it looks like 2c2 plus uh, 6c3x plus, looks like we have 12c4x squared plus da 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 da. Okay. Again, this must be true at all x's. So in particular, if x equals 0, then that tells us if we evaluate on the left, then negative sine of 0 will be 0. And on the right, we will have 2 times, we'll have 2c2 two plus 0. Let's see if we can get our colors in place. There's that. There's that. There's that. And from this, it should be clear that we get that C2 equals 0. Okay. Well, now we have three coefficients. Two of them are 0, and we've also found that C1 is 1. Works so well. Let's do it again. So if we do this again, we can differentiate. Oops. All right, we can differentiate. Uh, 
And when we differentiate, the derivative of the left side, negative sine, will be uh, negative cosine x. And on the right side, we will have, it looks like 6c3 plus 24 c4x plus just um i know that the next term out would be 60 c5x squared plus dot 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 you may you say where's the 60 come from you can add some extra terms and see that for yourself um, you see the pattern so our pattern says we then let x equal zero then that's going to tell us that the cosine of zero is one. So negative cosine zero would be negative one equal to six C3, which tells us that C3 equals one over six. Notice that one over six is the same thing as one over three times two times one. Hmm. Okay. So let's see if we can put this together and recognize the the pattern uh, of what we've what we've come up with. So we have found so um, so today. We found that C naught equals zero, and we found that C1 is one, C2 equals zero, and C3 equals one over six or one over three factorial. Okay, and when you see that factorial show up here, it could cause you to think back to the C1 term and so one would be the same as one over one factorial. Okay, so let's see if we can put this together. So that tells us that so far, uh, sine of x is equal to, c naught is zero. So then we're gonna have one over one factorial, one over one, factorial uh, x, come on, minus, ooh, I lost my minus over here, uh, minus one over three factorial x cubed. And then we can think about what our pattern is looking like. Our pattern seems to be going, uh, seems to be going sine, sine of zero, cosine of zero, sine, negative sine of zero, negative cosine of zero, and then it's going to loop back around. So it goes from sine of zero to cosine of zero, from cosine of zero to negative sine of zero, from negative sine of zero to cosine of negative cosine of zero, and then it flips back around to the top. So our so the signs that we're evaluating each time are going to go 0, 1, 0, negative 1. 0, 1, 0, negative 1. 0, 1, 0, negative 1. So that tells us we're only going to have these odd powers and we're going to our signs are going to alternate and we can see the coefficient or we can see the factorial showing up. So our next term is going to be plus 5 factorial x to the 5th. Our next one will be 1 over 7 factorial x to the 7th plus et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we could write this more concisely as that sine x is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of we got to have alternating signs, so we'll have a negative one to the nth power. And then we want to have just odd powers, because notice your powers are one, three, five, and seven. And so we'll have 
x to the 2n plus 1. So there's that odd power. And similarly, we have odd number factorial, odd number factorial, odd number factorial. And so we'll have a 2n plus 1 factorial in the denominator. So here, got to be careful. Here is our power series formula for sine x. We haven't yet talked about when that power series is valid, like what for what x values it converges. We're going to get that a little bit later on. Uh, but we were able to use derivatives um, to find all the various coefficients. So the series we found is an example of a more general type of power series called a Maclaurin series. So here's our definition. Suppose the function f has derivatives of all orders on an interval centered at x equals 0. Then its Maclaurin series is given by f of x equals f of 0 plus f prime of 0 uh, evaluated x plus f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial times x squared plus the third derivative of f evaluated at 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed plus the fourth derivative of f evaluated at 0 over 4 factorial times x to the fourth plus dot 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 dot. So what I want you to notice here is that the the derivative number matches the factorial and that all of these are being evaluated at zero. And not only are they being evaluated at zero, but the, um, the it's the fourth derivative, the fourth factorial, and the fourth power. Like all those things are going working together. But this is me, this is how we make up the Maclaurin series. I also want to clarify a typo. This is f prime of zero, not f prime of the letter O. So this can be written more concisely as f of x equals the sum from n equals zero to infinity of the nth derivative of f evaluated at zero over n factorial times x to the n. So you see all those nth derivative, n factorial, x to the n, and there are all the functions are being evaluated at x equals zero. So note, a Maclaurin series is a type of power series. It's found by finding the coefficients term by term using derivatives. Example two, find a Maclaurin series, that is a power series representation for f of x equal to e to the x. So if you wanna find a Maclaurin series, that means you need to find the coefficients. And conveniently enough, it's kind of straightforward. So we know that our coefficients um, are going to come from derivatives. So uh, C naught is going to equal F of zero divided by zero factorial. Um, C one will equal F prime of zero divided by one factorial. C two will equal f double prime of zero divided by two factorial. C three will equal the third derivative evaluated at zero divided by three factorial. C four, fourth derivative evaluated at zero divided by four factorial, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, this means we need derivatives of f of x, um, and we need to evaluate them all at zero. Nice part about derivatives of e to the x. I think I said f of x. We need derivatives of e to the x. Nice part about the derivative of e to the x is it's just e to the x. So um, f of x is e to the x at zero. This will be uh, just one. So e to the zero is one divided by zero factorial, which is one or one. F prime of X is e to the X evaluated at zero. This is one divided by one factorial is one or just one. Um, F double prime of zero is e to the X evaluated at zero is one 
divided by here, I'll write it as just two factorial um, or one half. F, the triple prime of F would be e to the X evaluated at zero is still one divided by three factorial. The fourth derivative of F is e to the X evaluated at zero is one. It won't always be this easy, but e to the X is pretty nice divided by four factorial. And I think by this point, we can see our pattern. We can see that if we had a CN, our CN would end up being one divided by N factorial. So putting this together, we get uh, the E to the X is equal to one plus one X plus one over two factorial x squared, plus one over three factorial x cubed. Ooh, I think we're seeing a pattern. This would be x to the fourth over four factorial, plus x to the fifth over five factorial, et cetera, et cetera. Or in other words, e to the x is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of uh, x to the n over n factorial. So here is our power series, specifically a Maclaurin series representation for e to the x centered at zero. We've introduced, introduced this new centered at zero vocab. We'll explain it more later, but for the time being, we'll just kind of recite it. So here's our power series aka Maclaurin series, centered at zero. This particular um, series may be familiar to you. you may, if you're paying attention, you might remember. This was actually also um, included in our differential equation solution. So in a solution to f of x, equals f prime of x. A question that was in the previous uh, example. Notice we still haven't addressed the issue of when this um, power series is valid, like for what x values this will converge. That's going to come later um, in, a, in a future video. So as with geometric series, the Maclaurin series can be manipulated to go quite a ways. So in example three, find a Maclaurin series that is a power series representation for the following. So in A, we have f of x equals e to the 2x. So let's start by recalling the thing that we're given. So recall, pardon me, recall that e to the x equals the sum from n equals zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. And let's see if we can see this thing in color. So notice this is e to the green x equals the sum from n equals zero to infinity of green x to the nth power over n factorial. So that should help you see that uh, e to the two x or f of x we'll have a green 2x. So this will be the sum from n equals zero to infinity of 2x to the n over n factorial. Now, if you wanted to, you could go through the whole Maclaurin series derivation, but you don't have to, you could save yourself a little bit of time. Uh, if you wanted to, you could rewrite this as n equals zero to infinity of two to the n, x to the n over n factorial. So maybe that's a, a cleaner, prettier way of writing it. Um, it and you could actually see uh, where this would come from because if you started taking derivatives of e to the two x, you get, you know, f is e to the two x, f prime is two e to the two x, f double prime is four e to the two x, f triple prime is eight e to the two x. The fourth derivative would be two to the fourth 
e to the 2x. The fifth derivative would be 2 to the fifth e to the 2x. Oh, wait, those are powers of 2 that are showing up as coefficients. So you can see how this formula would come to be. In part b, we're looking for a power series for g of x equal to x to the fourth e to the x. And so here we can play a different type of little cleverness. And so again, we, uh, we recall We recall that e to the x is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. Well, we don't actually care about e to the x. What we care about is x to the fourth times e to the x, which would be x to the fourth times the sum from n equals zero to infinity uh, times of x to the n over n factorial. And what I wanna point out here is that as far as the summation is concerned, the variable is n. The variable isn't x. So the summation thinks the variable is n, the function thinks the variable is x. They're sort of like two separate things. And so, as far as the summation is concerned, the variable is n. And so we can bring this x to the fourth inside the summation. So this will be equal to uh, the sum from n equals zero to infinity of x to the fourth um, times x to the n over n factorial, or just, let me clean this up a little bit, or just the sum from n equals zero to infinity of x to the n plus four over n factorial. So what these, what these examples show you, I hope, is that just like we could get a lot of mileage out of a single uh, geometric series, so we have one geometric series and we could manipulate it and get a lot of other uh, series, similarly, we can get a ton of mileage out of a single Maclaurin series. So it's like one little teeny formula um, gives us a whole bunch of power. And the, that Maclaurin series concept of taking derivatives and using the derivatives to find the coefficients to find a power series uh, gives us a huge amount uh, of, of power and, uh, and potential in this world of power series. Once again, these power series, these are like the duct tape, the Swiss army knife of, of mathematics. So in this little lesson on power series, we were introducing the idea of a Maclaurin series, which is basically a way of finding the coefficients of the power series term by term by using the derivative, specifically the derivative evaluated at zero. It takes a little bit of time, it takes a little bit of getting used to, uh, but rat, whereas with the geometric series, we were spending all of our time on manipulations. Here with the Maclaurin series, we're spending all of our time taking polynomials and looking for patterns in polynomials. And this idea of the Maclaurin series is especially valuable when in situations where it's very easy to take uh, derivatives, we can take derivatives very, very rapidly. So there's the end of this little lesson.